Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to another Focus Singles Ministry. Uh, so glad you can join us this evening, every first Tuesday at seven o'clock. Uh, please do us a favor and share at this time. Uh, tag somebody, get somebody on. Let us know how you are um, enjoying these particular lessons. Um, we're so excited about the new year. We're going to be implementing some new ways to get these discussions out. Um, some creative ideas and some great creative, creative topics, and we're just excited about the guests that are going to be on. And, people want to help teach and the way the presentation is going to be made uh, next year we are excited about that um, again do us a favor and please share at this time uh, so we can get in here and uh, do our thing and get out um, just some thoughts came across my mind uh, while I was putting this particular lesson together and I hope this will help for relationships as well as helping individuals um, that are want to be married in the future and uh, just some just some tips I want to kind of go over. The first thing I want to share is nature before function. Nature before function. What I mean by that is that an individual must possess the nature before the title. They must possess the nature before the title. The person is the person before a title is ever granted. One of the problems that we have is that we give people titles too early without checking their nature first. A friend is a friend before you call them friend, which means they act like a friend before a title ever shows up. The Bible says he that finds a wife finds a good thing. Not he that finds a woman but he that finds a wife, which means a wife is a wife before she ever becomes one. Or in modern day terms, a spouse is a spouse before they ever come one. Marriage doesn't change anybody. Does this person have wifely uh, husband details and actions and nature? Or can the person function as one before the title is ever presented? Meaning this, they're caring. They're willing, they're sacrificial, those things. Because marriage, there's no special pixie dust that falls down at the ceremony that makes somebody change. That's why you see so many people struggle in thinking that a baby would change somebody or putting a ring on it would change an individual. All those things, all they do is make people more of who they already are. So marriage, the ceremony doesn't, it gives the person a title it doesn't change their nature. If they were trifling before the wedding, they'll be trifling after the wedding. There's this thing going on with people that, you know, um, is concerning to me, which is having somebody is more important than having a good person. Just having somebody so you won't be by yourself uh, seems to be more important than actually having somebody that's bringing in some pleasure and joy in your life. But one thing I've learned throughout this life counseling so many people, having a body, a body is different than having somebody. Having a body, having somebody physically there is not the same as having somebody that can contribute positively to your life. Never settle just for a body, just for somebody that's there because um, you talk to some married people and you don't counsel enough people. It's worse being in the house with somebody that you don't like than it is being by yourself and it's just you in the house. It is a whole lot worse because the reality is, is that function, nature has to be in place and you can't force somebody to be someone that they can. They either have it or they don't. They grow into it or they don't. All right. So, so, but you can't force it on them. You can't make them be a spouse, a good wife, make them be a good husband. You can barely change yourself. How in the world are you going to change somebody else? Which tells us you need to know what is a definition of a spouse to you? If you're a man, what does a wife look like to you? And what does a husband look like to you? If you're a woman, what does a wife, as a wife, what does that look like to you? And as a husband, what are you looking for? So a man is to look at what type of husband he wants to be, what type of good husband he thinks that is, what kind of wife he desires. Same thing with a wife, what kind of wife she wants to be and what type of husband she desires. And then watch this. If you get with somebody, 
Y'all go over definitions because why? Your view of a spouse can be completely different than somebody else's view of a spouse. To them, a husband is just being present, paying bills, and is not there emotionally. To you, a husband to you is, you know, yeah, you can take, you can take care of provision, but you're also a provider emotionally and psychologically. To you, a wife could be just somebody who just is a homekeeper and, you know, takes care of stuff. But a wife, you, you, you think other person thinks of a wife as somebody that's ambitious, somebody that can work, somebody that can do all these things. You got to go over definitions and figure out does the person's nature um, allow them to fulfill your definition. And do you fulfill your own definition? And can you fulfill the other person's definition? And if you can't meet there, you have an issue. Maybe we'll do a whole session on that uh, next year sometime. If you can't over on definitions, if you can't meet those definitions, then you're not the right person for that individual. Or that person's not the right one for you. Because you have a right to your non-negotiables. I'm getting off topic. But so nature before function. All right. Next thing. Please don't get stuck on petty. Get off of pettiness. The problem with pettiness is it's celebrated in this generation. But pettiness is not a fruit of the spirit. Pettiness is not a fruit of the spirit. Petty people are stuck on small things, minor issues, minor details, and make those minor things into something bigger than what they need to be. As someone says, how can you be big when small has you? How can you be big when small has you? I'll give an example. I was thinking about this the other day. People, you see it online, you know, making plates for people. You know, you had an event, who should make a plate and all that stuff like that. If you worried about making a plate, you probably aren't ready for marriage. All right. If you worried about who making plates, you're not ready for marriage. Because first off, marriage is all about serving each other. Marriage is all about service. So if you had a picnic, one person get the plate, other person get the desserts and the juice. Why are we arguing about this? Just get the food. Look to serve each other. But if you argue it over, you know, who, who dessert deserves to be served and plates and stuff like that, you're probably not ready for marriage yet. Because marriage is all about service. I'm not serve each other in the way that the other person sees service, love each other. But the whole goal is serving and the whole goal is love. But if you're stuck on petty, how can you succeed in something big when pettiness has you overcome the petty? All right. <laughs> Next thing. Identify your cynical side that's been created by your wounds. Identify your cynical side that's been created by your wounds. We come, right, to new relationships, right, with our previous experiences. We come with everything based off those, though, from those previous experiences into this new thing. The problem is when you bring them in and they're influential. Use your past as a teaching tool, not as a guide to be cynical about your future. Some of the things that are on your I'm never going to do list, right, are there because the wrong person didn't appreciate it. Most cynical people go into a relationship. I'm not going to do this. I ain't doing this. I ain't never doing this. Da, 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 da. And the thing that you're doing is not necessarily a sin. It's not bad. It's just you did it for the wrong person. They didn't appreciate it. They took advantage of it. And now you're going in. I ain't doing none of this stuff. I ain't doing this. And it's all based off you being jaded and being wounded in your past. And some of those things that are on your list of what you're not going to do, right? You'll deprive yourself and the person of those good things because you're walking around cynical and hurt. The thing that you don't want to do is okay. You just did it with the wrong person. Again, I'm not talking about sin and stuff like that. Normal things that are done in the right context are beneficial when it's with the right person. 
But when you've been jaded and you've been cynical, you go in, I ain't doing this, I ain't doing this, because last person time I did this, it, 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 it backfired on me. It was just the person that you did those things for. Like if you're a super generous giving person and you you are a giving individual in your last relationship, you get a new one and you like, I ain't doing I ain't doing none of that again. You know, and the new person comes in. They're great to you, giving, loving, and you're withholding because of what somebody else did. And you're making a new person pay for what somebody else did. We know what you don't want to do, but what do you want to do? And over time, trust can be built in a way where you'll do it for that person but nobody else you'll be there for that individual because why it's not that the thing you were doing was wrong it's who you were doing it with and who you did for some people get hurt i'm, I'm not going out my way to do nothing for nobody else because every time i go out my way to help somebody else they always hurt me going out your way is not bad it's who you're going out your way for What's the issue? Someone that took advantage of it couldn't appreciate it and end up hurting you. Which tells me this. Number four, heal from those wounds. Heal from the wounds. The person that hurt you isn't responsible for your healing. The person that hurt you is not responsible for your healing. Your healing is between you and God. Your healing is between you and God. Let me help you something. Marriage does not fix your wounds. If anything, marriage exposes your wounds and can make them greater in the wrong context. A spouse can help you with your wounds, but they are not responsible for your wounds because your healing is between you and God. And there are many people that are greatly disappointed because they're expecting another person to do what they cannot do. Here's the thing. You can barely fix yourself. What makes you think you can fix somebody else or they can barely fix themselves? What makes you think they can fix you? We got to go to God for healing. Resolve those things because why? The person that hurt me isn't responsible for my healing. The people around me aren't responsible for my healing. My healing is between me and God and people help me heal. They help grow. They help us develop. Last point and I'm done. Marriage to the right person is difficult. Marriage to the right person is difficult. I know, you know, especially those of you that are in the Hallmark, Lifetime movies, Maya shaking her head, you know, all the super dreamy stuff and all the fantasy world, all that. I want them to make a real movie about real marriage, real relationships, so people can see what the reality is like. That marriage to the right person is hard sometimes. It has great joy, brings great benefits. You wouldn't trade it for the world, but it is work also. This fantasy, we're just going to be all happy all the time. It's going to be the honeymoon phase all the time. And you're going to be smiling all the time. It's not real. There are seasons where you look at your spouse and wonder what the heck you were thinking. You know, <laughs> y'all look at each other. I can't stand you. I can't stand you either. Marriage is work. It's a wonderful thing. It's a joyous thing. But it is work. Sometimes it feels like it's trial and error. Sometimes it feels like it's trial and error. We're working through some stuff. A lot of marriages compromise. It's working together. Because here's the thing. It takes one moment to make you a unit and years to become a cohesive team. One moment to become a unit and years to become a cohesive team. The ceremony takes 20 minutes and it takes a lifetime to become a cohesive team. And that comes through failure, through, um, not, not, I'm not justifying people making crazy mistakes, but I'm just saying it comes through failure, it comes through ups and downs, it comes through working through some things, it comes through disagreement, it comes through patience and learning to come out of your way of seeing things and seeing somebody else's way of seeing things. It means you come out of your own selfishness. You come out of your own perceptions to see things somebody else's way. And it comes to working out what's going to work best for us. 
Marriage takes work. You, the ceremony, the honeymoon, it takes work. Why do you think of the Old Testament um, where somebody got married, the husband couldn't go to war or work for a whole year? Y'all build this foundational part of your marriage up. Now, you can't do that now. You can take a whole year off because you need to work. You need to pay your mortgage, your rent. But it goes to show you those first couple months, that first year is important in a relationship. It helps build the foundation. But marriage takes work. Because why? Great talent does not equal success. Great talent does not equal success. Just because somebody's successful on their job doesn't mean they could be successful in a relationship. Just because they're smart in academics doesn't mean they're intelligent in a relationship. Because great talent does not equal success. I remember years ago, the Los Angeles Lakers, uh, uh, they brought in Carl Malone and Gary Payton, and they had Kobe and Shaq, I believe, and somebody else, and they, 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 they didn't win it all. People thought they were going to take it all because they had all this great talent. But great talent doesn't make you a great team. Just because you're a manager on your job, you own your business over here, all of a sudden, y'all can make it work. Relational intelligence doesn't always translate into business intelligence and vice versa. It takes work to people willing to consider the other over self. Marriage is two people consider, willing to consider the other over the self. And you can have a good relationship when two people master the art of servanthood. It's not about me. It's about us. Because what I do affects us. Hope you guys learned something tonight. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, we'll be back next month. Um, excited about these new things we're going to get into uh, next year. And you guys have a great holiday. Please don't forget that we're in the middle of our toy drive. Um, we're trying to collect toys, coats, hats, and gloves. Um, new, of course, uh, during this time. We need everything if we can by the 12th. We can accept after, but we... We prefer the 12th so we can start distributing to different organizations to give them enough time. Or you can give on our website, uh, go to Bethany.com, and you can purchase, uh, you can uh, donate there, excuse me, and click Catch the Fire, and we'll go out and we'll purchase those items. Our New Year's Eve service is coming up very soon. Of course, we're giving our first fruits that night, um, an additional tithe or $100. Um, service is going to begin uh Pre-concert, a concert, engaged live time from 10, beginning at 10. Service will begin around about 1030. Of course, they're going to be fasting during that time frame, and we're believing God together. So glad you can join us on Focus Singles Ministry. Uh, God's going to do a great work in your life. We'll see you in the new year. God bless you.